Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Third time today, guys. We did our second video over on Heart's Home. I encourage everybody to go check it out. Uh, Heart's Home is, is lighter, so um, it is the spiritual side of things, but you know, it's, it's something that may be needed even for those of you that aren't necessarily interested in the spiritual side of things. It, it has a little something for everybody. Yes, and we want to thank our Patreons. Every video goes up on Patreon, and then there are some that just go up on Patreon. But if you're having problems sharing videos or anything like that, viewing things, uh, head to Patreon and see, because, again, YT does its own thing a lot of the times. You know, this is JB back in 1986. Just listen to this and also note the energy because this is not the same person that's in uh, the White House. Whether or not in Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Whether or not in Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. So what the reality is the United Nations is the one. And, you know, I am heartened because I do see on uh, certain forums, people are waking up and they're even waking up to the religious aspects of this, saying, pointing this stuff out. Hey, did you know it was a Rothschild that actually uh, brought about the recreation of Israel? It wasn't God. It's like, wow, you know, finally people are starting to wake up a little bit. Well, what a concept that it wasn't the creator of all. It was Rothschild. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, that's this is part of the big, well, it's the time of the big light bulb going off. And, yeah, we are running out of time to stop another great cataclysm. And here we see Biden. I have directed the protection of Jews in America, and we will never allow anti-Semitism, and there is no place for hate crimes in the U.S. He informed Netanyahu of the need for Israel to act according to the rules of war. In other words, you don't just destroy uh, citizens openly and blatantly. U.S. is sending more F-18 and F-35 fighter jets to the Middle East. We work to recover American detainees in Gaza. He did a, uh, He also mentioned they're doing everything they can, but they can't promise anything, of course. You know, this is, again, part of a much bigger picture. And we talked about this on the earlier um, video, perhaps not in exactly this language, but I know people understand what's coming. Hamas has declared war on the American people. It, it's it's not really just Hamas. This This is something that is going to unify the Islamic world and not just the Islamic world. It's also going to uh, put in that same basket the two largest countries in the world population-wise and the one that has the most nuclear warheads in the entire world and a couple dozen other countries. You know, this is huge. So earlier today, the leader of Hamas called on extremists in America and around the world to create a jihad on Friday. This Friday, they are openly calling for the death of non-Muslims. Unarmed cities like L.A., Chicago, New York City are highest risk cities in America. And then he just puts there 46 voters. Aren't you glad? Can you imagine, you know, again, something like that in Canada in New Zealand, in Australia, in the UK, where people eat, don't even really have much of a chance to arm and protect themselves. Yeah, but it's coming all over. You know, when we're talking about NATO countries, we're talking about all these NATO countries. This is a war. An army of Islamic soldiers marched through the streets of Sydney, Australia, chanting Allahu Akbar, Allah Akbar. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's this is what all those, not all, not every single one. I should correct myself. But again, this is what many of those illegal immigrants have came here for. When you look at Christianity and Islam, as you can see, they are by far the most dominant religions in the world. Christianity is the dominant religion. 
Islam is number two. Islam uh, is is growing faster, and you know part, it's interesting to see this. Part of the reason is just simply because they are having more kids, and you know a lot of times you might not. There's certain countries you might not think are predominantly Muslim. You know, a lot of them in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and, you know, countries like Indonesia, which you might think of as a country over there in Asia, but it is a predominantly Muslim nation. And so they're simply having more kids. Islam, by the way, does mean submission. Submission to the Quran and to, uh, well, and the Bible from the Islamic point of view. And, you know, again, is people that f believe in Islam, they believe it's the culmination of the Old Testament, New Testament, and with the Koran, that's the quote-unquote holy trinity of books, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They believe that Muhammad uh, was the last prophet and that it all wraps up together in this. It's interesting, too, uh, when you look into to the beliefs, you know, it does mean submission. So it means you have to submit to what is written in the in the Quran and also to the will of Allah. And, you know, I've done research on on the origins of Allah. And again, you know, just like with Yahweh, it, it's it's a very, very interesting um, assortment of tales and really, it, it's, it all ties in together with these beings that also claim that the purpose of man's creation was to be slaves. Uh, as you see, it says, Know that Allah created man for his worship. Literally, he, and he says, I created the jinn, who are very nasty entities. They are thought forms, um, but they are completely demonic and man for only one purpose, which is my worship and to serve me. And again, what do, what, what do the Sumerian stories say about the Anunnaki? They created man to be a slave race. It's in agreement. It is in agreement. They are in agreement. Meanwhile, the U.S. deploying the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier battle group to Israel in the Mediterranean Sea uh, the Gerald R. Four aircraft carrier battle group is off the coast of Israel. Uh, so sometime next week, it's leaving Norfolk, Virginia. So sometime next week, uh, we'll be arriving there. And there's a lot of other forces in the area. And, you know, the thing is, th this is so obvious that we, this is WW number three, plain and simple. Over 300,000 Israeli troops have lined up at the Gaza border ahead of imminent invasion. And as we know, you know, there's going to be just tremendous firepower in this region. This time it's different, though, because, again, you have Russia, China, and other nations that are going to back up the Palestinians and Hamas and Hezbollah. And, you know, th it's not going to be uh, the same thing. And, and... Israel's been told, quite simply, you go in there with that type of force and a ground invasion, you will find yourself attacked by dozens of nations. As you see, we are ready to confront the American aircraft carrier and even showed what? Showing pictures. Again, they've done demo runs. They've actually uh, been practicing taking out aircraft carriers. There was a dummy aircraft carrier. Uh, this is going back, I want to say, about a year ago that they were practicing, um, well, sending down to the bottom of the ocean, or in this case, the Mediterranean Sea. They are ready for this, absolutely. This is from Hezbollah. And reports of Iranian Revolutionary Guard transporting hundreds of heavy, long-range ballistic missiles to their launch sites. E yeah, Israel does this, which they probably will. Um, it's no sign of them not doing it. It's it's not they're they're not going to just have their enemies roll over this time, as you see. Pakistani army, if Israel launches a ground operation against Gaza, will provide ballistic missile support to Hamas. W would Pakistan get involved directly? And then this says, "Dear India, time to prove your worth as an ally of Israel." 
Well, you know, India is interesting because it's the I in BRICS. It's part of the BRICS union. Uh, I do suspect that India's leadership wants to not get involved militarily, but they may be pulled in. And if you do have that situation, then what do you have going up against the U.S. and its allies? This is from globalfirepower.com. The U.S. is still ranked as the strongest uh, military force, as you can see, the, the number there, 0 0.0712. Russia second at 0 0.0714. And then China, then India. Then you have the U.K. and South Korea, two allies of um, the United States. Then you have Pakistan next. And then Japan, France, and Italy, all uh, allies of the U.S. And you see Turkey here at 11, Brazil, that's the B in BRICS, 12, Indonesia right there, Egypt, Ukraine. Just interesting to note, again, 1.4 billion people in both China and then 1.4 billion in also um, over in India. Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi and Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had their first ever phone call discussing Palestine. Now, you know, the whole war in Yemen is a de facto war of Saudi Arabia against Iran. And here they are working together. If the Sunnis and the Shiites come together, uh, yeah, you, you are basically looking at a unified Islam. Which brings me back to this quatrain, which speaks of a, a unified army of a million men and an Arab prince towards Persia, inclined towards Persia. Yes, they are in agreement. They are in union. And so, you know, it's pretty clear what's developing here. And then NATO is deploying forces as well. British fighter jets arrive at Cyprus. It's going to be a mess and it's probably going to come lightning fast 22 american citizens killed in the hamas surprise attack on saturday 17 still being held hostage and here we go and this is michael yan this is down there in the darien gap this is down there in panama reality check this is war the migrants are your replacements yes that's exactly my words previously uh, he says they are useful idiots. The plan is obvious, you know, cause racial tension and division, get them all to kill each other, and then bring in a more manageable group. This is exactly what's been going on for thousands of years. That, that's the game plan. This is why when you look at like 23andMe and Ancestry.com, you see things that don't make any sense because... Oh, there's been shuffling going on for thousands of years. Whole entire populations disappear. Other ones come in from a totally different area. You know, those elongated heads that we find in Paracas in South America. Paracas. Those skulls. You, you find the closest genetic relatives in the Black Sea area. Oh, it's a tangled web. And yeah, the southern border has been infiltrated by Hamas and other terrorist groups. And now we have the call for a global jihad on Friday. Are you ready? Well, you got some politicians basically uh, saying, you know what? At least one. You were right. We were wrong. Uh, yeah. Well, this really tells you it's it's too little too late. You got something else to keep your eye on and and that's exactly what they do this is a distraction but it's also a life-threatening distraction meanwhile in the netherlands they're taking away all the atms national policy no more atms no more cash withdrawals they're getting ready for the new system that comes into effect after ww hashtag number three which won't last too long yeah i guess they just won't need any cash no, you know, again, it, it's it's a total systemic change. So, insights, Miss Cindy, what are you feeling? I was doing Qigong this morning, and all of a sudden, uh, and maybe it's just because my mind was so busy, but all of a sudden I felt this uh, super strong, imposing, dark energy just like out of the blue. 
And I do think it's because um, we've been so wrapped up with clientele and the videos and helping people uh, that that momentarily quieting, all of a sudden I could feel the energy so clear. You know, it's the, the change is coming. We've known it for a long time. They're setting up things so that we can see, obviously, but is anyone really ever, ever ready? You know, is anyone really prepared and the answer is no you know we're, we're never going to be prepared for such a upset and something so huge to change our world and the way we live and the way we do things but um gotta look to the little things look to the little things for happiness and fun yes absolutely and you might find some good good recommendations and guidance and Places you might not suspect. Maybe sometimes there's wisdom uh, that can be seen from small places. Indeed. So guys, take care. Be prepared. Keep spreading the light. And actually, please do go over and subscribe to Heart's Home. Uh, because talking about light, uh, what we have over there is, is basically a meditation uh, activation that can definitely protect you and also help to put out those positive intentions to protect uh, your your home your town your city your country the world we have great great power they just don't want you understanding just how much power we have and the more people come online and really awaken truly awaken that's when we can change the paradigm source bless and namaste namaste